Man, if there wasn't a video that was gonna end my career before, this will be the one that ends it. But before everybody cancels me, allow me to uh, establish the scene. Ollie London has come out as Korean and got plastic surgery to appear more Korean, in particular Celebrity Jimin. Here's a picture pre and post op. Now I'm gonna let you all digest that statement while I say that you should subscribe and hit the bell to the channel for more internet happenings and drama with this dash of psychology and philosophy thrown in because I have to make my ridiculous $100,000 degree worth it somehow. Please subscribe. I'd like to pay it off before I die. Anyway, with that existential dread out of the way, you might see me reading off of a script a lot for this video. That's because I'm trying to handle it tactfully, and this video is going to be filled, filled, filled from top to bottom with contentious, uh, hot-button topics. Anyway, with that being said, Ali London came out as non-binary and got more plastic surgeries that all culminated in a stunt everyone saw coming. Or, I mean, they had talked about it happening, but now it finally happened. Uh, by the way, Ollie London uses Neo pronouns, this being Ko Rian and Jim Min, which conceptually sounds like a joke I would come up with. That's like if I asked you to call me Puerto Rican or Empanada. Anyway, I'm gonna have to draw a line in the sand here and say that uh, maybe, just maybe, um, I won't respect your pronouns if you're gonna want to be identifying as a member of BTS. So I will be referring to Ali London with they them pronouns because I think that would be the adult and appropriate thing to do. I'm sorry, I just don't think I can accept somebody being Korean self. I just can't. <laughs> now, I understand that that whole portion might be ridiculous and some of you might call Ali London a racist. However, you might be right and we'll all get to that, but let's just get it out of our systems how undeniably odd this entire situation is. I'll also give us some background on who they are, who this Ali London is, so that way we can all be on the same page. Oh, and if I just, again, if I accidentally use he, him pronouns, it's not because I'm some like secret closeted massive bigot. I think my opinions are too like open to be closeted about it, but it's a mistake, not me being an asshole. I want people to be comfortable and it's you know, sometimes it can be hard to respect people's pronouns, especially if you've been using the other pronouns for their entire life, okay? But most of the time when I see people correct others on that, it's more or less them looking for a gotcha moment. Uh, but just realize you are a YouTube comment. I will not remember what you said in a week and your opinion will have zero impact on me. Listen, I know I'm not a fuck face and that I respect people, right? I don't need you to tell me to respect people because my parents fucking raised me right to not be some dumbass on the internet telling some guy to go kill himself. Look, I'm just trying to preemptively stop Jimin's butt plug 49, my self-produced arch nemesis, from canceling me with a very rude Tumblr post. Now, Ali London is someone who dealt with body image issues in their youth. Uh, born in Britain, Ali found comfort in the Korean pop idol group BTS, in particular Jimin. Uh, plastic surgery companies operated in arms race like fashion, which for those of you curious is probably how Ollie got their start and their income. These surgeries advertise services by completing outrageous surgeries and requests from clients, which is why Ollie has money. Rather, this is my best guess. You get surgery for free or paid, but in return, the surgeons use you as an example of a successful surgery. Online you can read the cost of these surgeries, but without any way of knowing if Ollie works, one can assume that their fame and willingness to go under the knife is how we got to where we are right now. So, Ollie is not the first person to identify as transracial, in fact it's been becoming a lot more common to see happen, though many of these individuals have received untold amounts of criticism and ridicule, and most have been pushed to the footnotes of history, either having brief stints as internet celebrities or brief stints as political activists, before becoming completely just gone from the cultural zeitgeist. You know, I don't think I've mentioned this either in the video, but Ali is the first person to use neo pronouns related to their racial identity in conjunction with appearing transracial. So Ali goes under the knife to appear paler and in more ways like Jim Min, who they idolize. They've been getting these surgeries for like five years now. Uh, it started an unsuccessful pop career 
and it has led to multiple shows related to plastic surgery as well as a feature on Dr. Phil. This is primarily to address the surgeries that are going on and partly to address the obsession with the gym in. So that's Ollie's past, and I wanna move past how ridiculous this is to kind of talk about what I think is going on here, like deeper inside of Ollie, so that way we can really humanize them and kind of move past the whole canceling thing to have a discussion that might be a little bit more, I don't know, nuanced. Again, I'm not excusing what Ollie's done. I think people seem to conflate me not being 100% negative about something with being 100% in support of it. And like, man, I don't know where the fuck you get that super binary take on people's opinions because the place joke about gender here, don't sue me. I'm sorry. <laughs> First off, our society kind of rewards this banana's behavior from social media uh, to guest appearances on TV. It makes sense Ollie would not only become famous, but feel encouraged to pursue their career because it's what gives them time in the limelight. Uh, given the appearances Ali has made and that they have all of these friends that seem a lot like Ali, that being these are all people who get lots of surgeries and kind of enable this addiction to surgery. Ollie's around people that are going to encourage pretty much every single thing Ollie probably shouldn't be doing. If you spend your time around people who get lots of plastic surgery, you're probably going to be somebody who gets lots of plastic surgery as well. This also isn't addressing the dependency on standing Jim in and the deeply rooted parasocial relationship we have going on here. Ali London is deeply fixated with Jim in to an unhealthy degree. Not like murderous intent, danger stuff going on, but cause for concern for Ali's personal health and safety. Now, pretty much all of the people who have identified as transracial have explained why, and the reasoning is similar throughout, so we're gonna get to that. I think this may be like an important touchstone of psychology, but remember, I'm just some guy, not a doctor. I'm just taking a educated guess here. So Ali, because of their body image issues, has found comfort in a culture that prioritizes beauty. Getting small surgeries in South Korea is seen as much more common. Ali idolized the beauty standards and through the music became ingrained in a culture where they felt like they could fit in. I know less about South Korea than China and Japan, but I'm gonna go out on a cultural limb here and say that much like those other two countries, South Korea is hard to culturally assimilate to. Anyway, not excusing getting surgery to look Korean, but Ali probably genuinely feels comfortable there and wants to be more a part of it. Generally, people who do this stuff have dealt with feelings of being ostracized or feeling othered in a community. Anyway, Ali is probably doing this because they feel more comfortable, but the question is whether or not their comfort is worth allowing someone to say that they are Korean. Like, I feel as a society, we've definitely prioritized people's comfort quite a bit, but the question needs to be begged here. At what point is there too much comfort where that comfort starts impeding on other people's comfort. There's a lot going on here. Surgery addiction, parasocial relationships, you know, feelings of identity. But what I don't think this is, is Ali London performing the most committed racist joke in history. Really, this is a mix of needing some therapy to combat a lot of eternal demons. Like, they're clearly not Korean, but it doesn't mean he should not like the culture. We passed an appropriate level long ago, but people think appreciation and appropriation are the same thing when they are not. Somebody learning to speak Korean does not mean that they are appropriating Korean culture. Appropriating Korean culture is where you take, like, things that are visually from that culture and then put it in a new place without context. Appropriation is the weeaboo who claims to know everything about Japanese life and society, but has gotten all of that information from, like, Naruto, okay? Like, maybe you can learn a thing or two, but that's not how you learn things. Really, I'm just trying to give us a more humanizing view of Ali, since that hasn't really been discussed. And while we as an internet society move to cancel them, I'm really begging the question, should we be canceling? Because as we've seen, ostracizing others from society tends to not make them want to re-enter it. The goal is to make sure Ali isn't, I don't know, offending Koreans, to which Koreans in the audience 
uh, you never asked for this, right? I didn't, I didn't see Koreans coming out and going, hey, could you stop this for us, please? I, I didn't see that. Um, you know, but what I have seen is, is people doing it on behalf of them. So don't worry, I might be, maybe I'm the first. But, you know what, Korea's in the audience, did you want this? Are you asking for the help? Do you want it? <laughs> is something that, is Ali London even something that bothers you, right? Is this something that there needs to be a discussion about? Or does it, do you not give a shit? Seriously, seriously, like does this keep you up at night or not? Look, my opinion full stop on all this though, uh, because right now I'm just trying to like, I don't know, play devil's advocate or, or kind of humanize Ali London because we've made a communal joke out of them, right? So let me level with you, right? I'm a minority, put that on a shirt because that's gonna sell like hotcakes. Um, and since we've all lost our collective minds and can't just accept people on merit or content of, or content of character, you know, things that are much deeper than skin, right? If, if that's important, right? Let, let me explain to you where I come from, right? If someone wanted to dance to my culture's music, speak the language, eat the food, uh, fuck the whatever they want, sure, I got no problem welcoming that person in. If the love is genuine, I want to share what I have with them. Now, if they got like spray tans and tried to change their name to Mark Anthony, I'd be like, y you don't need to do that to be accepted or to be able to say you're Puerto Rican. I don't know, but Latino culture seems to be a bit of an outlier, I've noticed, in terms of like discussing race stuff. I don't know, something like half of all Latinos identify with people by nationality. Uh, whenever I do a census, I'm asked to like put my race and I always have to write in Puerto Rican. Despite it not counting as a race for some people, you know, for many people who live in these countries, that is who they are. So when people get into discussions like this, my brain thinks about countries, not skin tones, because that culture is much more important. And basically, you can just become Puerto Rican by marrying into the family. Like, I've been spending more time around family in the city, especially since my grandmother died. You know, I, I know that's kind of been like a weird turning point in my opinions and, and how I operate the channel. But I have cousins who are like black as hell and they're Puerto Rican, right? They carry the culture and say that they are Puerto Rican. You know, I know people who are black, but their cultures are from Africa. It's completely different. Which, by the way, I found out I was like, I'm like a quarter like Congolese. But you know, if, if you're from Africa, each country has all of these different cultural pastimes and things that make them significantly unique, especially compared to like the cultures of the Caribbean. I mean, if you have friends from like Nigeria and then you got friends from Jamaica, the food might be different, the music might be different, the mood's just gonna be different. I don't know, I, I think that, you know, difference in culture is, is what makes it that way. And I think it just makes people seem more varied. I don't know, whenever people ask me about like my friends, I don't say like my black friends, I say my Jamaican friend or my blah, 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 blah. That's just how I've always seen it. Which just makes us all seem like much more diverse. I think it's a lot cooler that way. Now in Asian cultures from what I've read and studied, because if you follow me on Twitch, which by the way, please follow me on Twitch, it's a lot less doom and gloom than this. But you know that I'm reading about Asian cultures and studying Japanese. Though right now I'm working my way through Chinese history. Anyway, you might know that these cultures are a little bit different, especially compared to Western cultures. Japan is the most covered on YouTube at least, but expats rarely fully integrate if you watch the videos where they talk about this stuff. Really, it's a do as the Romans do kind of thing, and I just let sleeping dogs lie. The culture is very insular, so it's hard to become someone who doesn't have stereotypical Asian traits and become a part of the culture. You know, if you're in South Korea, I'd love to know if someone who's not technically like visually Asian can become Korean or if this is something that it kind of depends or it's like an American Western value kind of thing where you can become American or I mean in my case become Puerto Rican. Look, I just want my perspective heard on this because I don't think I've ever heard somebody talk about it like this. In fact, acknowledging any race aside from white and black in America has basically been ignored until the past year when some morons thought punching Chinese grandmas was somehow gonna stop the coronavirus. Last time I brought this up in a tweet, some very nice politically correct types were sure to inform me that I was black. And then some of the other ones said I was white. 
pretty much it seemed based on how much sun I got or whether or not they felt like I should be a victim of something, of what I don't know, but I'm not a victim, I'm Puerto Rican. So that's what I feel about the race shit uh, because I've never uh, heard any of that like talked about or said and um, I, I'm never gonna speak out about it on again uh, on the internet forever as long as I live because I do drama videos and uh, nobody will listen to me or, or listen to my opinions unless I package them in some useless drama video. Ah, listen, I can already see the YouTube commenter hitting the intellectual rebuttal uh, in, in the comments um, and, and giving me the largest well actually ever. Listen, you can write that essay, you will care deeply, I'll read it, I'll say, wow, what a fucking moron, and go on with my day. I'm just stating my thoughts, I'm not saying agree with me. Though, you know, I, I can't stop you, you have free speech, and I'll probably read it anyway. I'm not even saying Ali London should be calling themselves Korean. In fact, I don't think most people who live in Korea actually care if asked. But TLDR, Ali has no reasonable explanation for getting any surgery. But any ridicule is encouraging the behavior as some rebellious outsider. They need therapy. And I don't know, possibly like, they need some kind of like rehab from BTS, is that a thing? That's not even a joke, I'm actually serious. I don't know, but something before these chronic surgeries actually start to impact their health, which it can, and has. Budget plastic surgeries are still an issue, even despite Ollie's fame. Literally nobody seems to advocate for them on the internet. And I'm not trying to like defend what they've done, but it's clear that Dr. Phil and former friends are taking advantage of their clear issues going on. Most of all, the people getting extreme surgeries seem to have unchecked hangups that go on for years because they end up making money off of the emotional pain. Point is, maybe the MILF with the ridiculous sized beach ball breast actually has some hangups and she's not looking for attention. Maybe it's some deep cut and that's why she got her titties enlarged. In fact, I think I covered a woman just like that on my channel a while back and that she had done that because either her husband died or cheated on her or both. It's something along those lines, but really I'm just trying to get your minds moving about maybe having this conversation in a different way that is a lot more constructive because just saying that Ollie London is bad isn't, isn't solving anything. Now, not streaming this week, but make sure to follow the Twitch. I would appreciate it if you do. I do stream there most of the time. It's pretty chill, pretty funny, and not like this horrible, horrible mess of a political social issue turmoil that will be annoying. I know it will. I also have an Instagram where basically I do stuff on there as well. I All over social media, I have FPS Diesel. Take care, be well, don't be an annoying pain in the ass, and um, Maybe just don't go on Twitter. I've I've been gone from Twitter for a week, so maybe you should do that too. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for a month again. I'm gonna go for a month without tweeting. Cause I fucking hate it there. There we go. Alright guys, take care and, and be well and uh, I don't know, fucking kiss your family and tell them you love them. Unless you hate them. But you know, your family's not blood. I'm rambling now. Just tell somebody that you care about them. Do that. That's nice, right?